Good evening. God bless you and welcome to our Friday night live service. We have a special service for you tonight. Two, you can count them, two speakers this evening that are going to be sharing God's word. Uh, before they come, I'm going to read a verse of scripture, pray for our tithes and our offerings, which we've made very easy for you to do. Uh, and then also pray for some of the needs that we have in our church. But the Bible says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And what that simply means is that we let God control the course of our lives to allow him to be the Lord of our lives and to give ourselves as a living sacrifice means surrender. It means just giving up and surrendering to God. And if you're willing to do that, the Lord will take control and your life will not be the same. He will lift you from the burdens, lift you from the issues in this life. Doesn't mean they go away, but he will lift you above those things where they cannot reach up high enough to pull you back down. So we thank God for that. We also want to pray for the needs of the, the people who have sent in their prayer requests. Our Wednesday night prayer support team has been awesome. I mean, needs have been met. Uh, people have been comforted. And I, th I just thank God for all that's taken place. Thank you, Sister Linda, Sister Francis, for your help there and all that's taken place there. Uh, so we want to pray for uh, Patricia, her son, Daniel and Joseph. We want to pray for Freddie, who has some needs in his life. Diana, uh, Susan and her family, uh, Antonio. We want to pray for all of these individuals that have, uh, you know, we that have either brought their requests or others who have brought their requests uh, for these individuals. So will you join with me tonight as we pray? We want to pray for them. We want to pray for our tithes and our offerings. Thank you so much for your giving and all of your support. Uh, we wouldn't be here without it. And so we just thank you. I am just so grateful. But let's go before the Lord with our, our prayer requests. Father God, we thank you tonight once again. Father, for the grace of God that has covered us, that has allowed us to be here. We thank you so much for your promises that you've given to us. We lift up the needs before us, my God, for Brother Freddie. We pray for him, for healing, for direction, for guidance of, uh, upon the doctors, my God. We pray, Father God, that you would move in his life. We pray, Father, for Sister Susan, her family, Lord God, and the needs there. We pray for Jessica, Lord God, that you would move in her life. We lift up Marlene to you, Father God. Francis and Ben, we thank you for them. We pray for them. We lift up Diana, my God, and her concerns for her family. We pray for Father God, tonight for Antonio, Lord, that you would move in his life, that you would touch him, my God, transform him, my God, meet his needs, Father God. We pray for his salvation. We pray, Lord God, that you would move in Jessica's life, Lord God, comfort her, speak to her, guide her, Father God. My God, we pray for all of the needs, my God, spoken and unspoken, Lord God. Oh, we thank you for what you're doing in David's life, Lord God, for Joseph, Father God. We pray, Father God, for Patricia, my God, for your comfort and strength in her life, Father God, and every other need represented. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Bless your people. Watch over your people. Oh God, be with us, we pray. Reveal yourself in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hello, people. God, it's Friday night and uh, the Lord has blessed me with some time here to share with you about uh, a message that's been in my heart. So I'm a, let's go to uh, Matthews 19, 16 to, uh, we're going to go to 22. And it says in 16, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? 17, So he said to him, why do you call me good? 
No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which one? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father, your mother, and you shall love your neighbors as yourself. And the young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. But when, G when, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possession. Father God, we come to you tonight, Lord, asking you for guidance, Lord, and your strength, your wisdom, Lord, and Lord, I'm asking you for those that are seeking salvation, Lord. May this word go deep within their hearts and bless them, Lord. And Father, we give you all the honor and glory tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, here in, in, in Mark 10, 17, um, the Bible says, the young man came running up to Jesus and knelt before him. So I, I, I mean, I, I like that one. It said, and, and called Jesus good teacher. This was probably the highest respect this young man could have uh, given Jesus at this time. This young man didn't come to Jesus to see if he could cross him up, cross up his teaching or to tempt him uh, into saying something uh, uh, wrong so he could run. He wasn't part of the Pharisees or the scribes that, that was denouncing Jesus, but he came because he wanted to learn about eternal life. 1 John 5, 13, 14, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is a promise of God about eternal life for those that are true believers and those that are following Christ. The young man was rich. He probably had it all together. He probably felt that he had arrived because of uh, the place where he was in, in life. Not too many uh, go to Jesus and ask about eternal life, especially young. Today, not too many young people uh, ask uh, uh, the Lord about eternal life. They just live for today. They have their money. They have their, their, their uh, uh, way of living. But this is a peculiar young man. He was really wanted to know about eternal life. Some wealthy people, too, they don't usually ask God for advice or, or, or guidance about their, their, their wealth. They usually just uh, look to themselves, their wealth, in everything. The young man knew there is something more, much more, to uh, this life, rewarding to this life, and that is eternal life. Romans 2, 6 and 7 Verse six says, God will repay each person according to what he has done to those who has, by persisting in doing good, seeks glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. So this is something that, uh, bef well, when we stand before God, all our deeds, everything we have done and, and said and, and how, how we have treated people, all that's going to be held into account on that day when, when we're called to, to leave here. Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good but the one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which one? Jesus said, you, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal you shall not bear false witness, honor your father, your mother. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these commandments 
our, our people to people relationship where we uh, uh, <clears throat> have to respect one another or, uh, uh, as an individual or their, uh, or, or their property or whatever it may be. But this is the type of relationship it is. And it's not just in the natural way Jesus is talking about, but in the spirit. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? And, you know, when, when you look at that, you know, here's this young man is like, you know, I don't know if he's uh, 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 super uh, right in what he's saying as far as I've kept all these, you know, from my youth. So that tells us one thing that he grew up in the temple. Like some of us, we grew up in the church. Yeah? What do you what do I still like? He said. And it seems like there's a little pride and self-righteous spirit popping off here. What do I still lack? He said. And Jesus is trying to get the young man to understand it. Salvation is by grace. It's the same thing. Eternal life uh, uh, after we leave here is by God's grace It's by his spirit. And I think this is something that the young man was not really understanding about these commandments and, and what he's asking about. Jesus said to him, if you really want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. But if you look at the first part, when, when he came to Jesus, he didn't come to Jesus and say, Lord, I want to follow you, or what do I have to do to follow you? But he stepped right over and asked for eternal life. But Jesus right here is telling him, follow me, because no one goes to the Father except through me. See, Jesus, Jesus is the true vine. He is the living water. And that's something we have to understand, too. This is a spiritual journey we on. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See, but see, Jesus didn't say empty your bank account and, and, and just uh, uh, give it all to the poor. He said, sell your possessions and give that to the poor. And maybe there was a misunderstanding or maybe the, the young man was just selfish that I don't want to do none of this. I'm not going to give anything away. This is all mine and I'm going to keep it. See, and, and, and I can hear him. I, 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 can't, I can't let go. He couldn't do that because he loved the world. So whatever his lifestyle, it, it, was, it was through his finances that he lived. And whatever he, however he lived, this was it. And Jesus hit it when he said, give your possession away. He understood that something more in this young man's life than just being wanting eternal life. What was keeping him bound to uh, the world? What was keeping him from uh, uh, helping the poor or, 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 or just surrendering a, a portion where what Jesus was asking about? And it's just like us at times when Jesus come to us in the same type of testing. Each of us have something to give up that God is asking us, oh, to follow me, you have to give this up. What I have to give up may not be necessary what you have to give up. But God is asking each one of us that this I want you to give up. Don't do this. Don't do that. Stop this. Don't do this. Don't do drugs. Don't drink. Don't do. This. He's asking each one of us. And what is bound binding us to this world that we refuse to give up? And most of the time when people refuse to give up, it, it ends up they back out of the church and they start blaming this person. That person is this situation, that situation. And it's not that at all. What Jesus is asking is within us, because what he asked me is not in anybody else. This is personal. And I believe what he was asking this young man here about giving his, uh, uh, his portion to the poor, that was something that was within that man. It wasn't Jesus. He just didn't pick him. It's just like the woman at the well. He was telling her, hey, if you really know who's giving you water, you'd be asking him for some water. The guy in the pool of Bethsaida, don't you really want to get healed? See, Jesus knew what was in this young man. 
And he knew what was stopping this young man. In the same way, he knows what's stopping each one of us from fulfilling or his will and, and God's purpose and plan in our lives. See, Exodus 20, verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. The young ruler, uh, 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 he broke that commandment. Two says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Broke that one too. There's nothing wrong with having money. Uh, uh, God finances people. God gives people uh, uh, jobs and businesses. Here are some wealthy people in the Bible. Solomon, Isaac, Jacob, Job, David. And all these was very wealthy people. They was beyond rich. So here's a question. What keeps us bound to the world? What keeps us from uh, 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 going through the process of allowing God to do what he want to do in our lives and, and, and brings us out of that, that, that worldly po poverty uh, uh, spirit that we carry sometimes? What is it? Isaiah 4, 6 says, so he answered me, answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord for Zerbel. Not by might nor by power, but by the spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Here was a man called by God that was in captivity and God and he brought him out. But when he brought him out, he, he gave him a call. He was the call to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple to help govern that that place right there. But when he went there, the place was just tore up. And if he would have looked at it in the natural, he probably would have said, there's nothing happening here. There, why did God send me here? Sometime in ministry, we look at it the same way. There's nothing happening here. There's nothing going on here. And, 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 and it's like sometimes we turn around and go the other way. Or we go over someplace where we feel things are happening. But those are the lies of the enemy. He also was looking through a glass dimly as we do. I was overseas for four and a half years and I was with three pastors and each pastor had their own vision doing something different. And one of them, one pastor had, it was three guys in the home, his wife and him. The second pastor, it was about three or four guys in the home and it was him. His wife was the worship team. He was the preacher and, and I helped out in the home. The third, the church was a little bit more advanced. All these pastors was pioneering and they had the worship team and, and, and things going on. But I could have looked at things in, that was happening and said, you know what? There's nothing happening here. Let me go back to America because I know there's some churches over there. God is moving in. But God was moving. It's not necessary. It's not in, in the natural that we look at it. We see things dimly. And when we in the natural and we start to try to figure out what God's doing. And that was the guy here. And, and uh, 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 Zachariah went to him and told him, hey, man, it's not by might. It's not going to happen the way you figure it out. The temple's not going to get built the way you see it. It's not going to be an army behind you. It's not going to be this and this. It's going to be by the spirit of God, God's grace, God's guidance. And that's the way the church is. And that's what this young man failed to see. He failed to see Jesus Christ. He failed to see the spirit of, of, of the commandments, living it. But he remembered them. He probably had one around his neck that he could remember. So when he get, get next to the body, he could quote that scripture, but it wasn't in his spirit. See? But it's not by might. It's not by our might. It's not by our power, you know, uh, and I was asked to hit. It was times when I was overseas. I was asked to hit the streets with the home. I slept with the home. I got up with the home. I ate what the home ate. And then it was times where, where I would hit the streets without the home. The home was doing something else. But I was asked to go to the streets and I could have got all grumpy. Hey, why am I? But you know what? I had moved with the spirit. And that's what we have to do in ministry. No. We got to move with what God wants. It's by his spirit. It's not by our might. It's not what we see. It's not what we think. It's by what the spirit says. Four says, trust God's word. Psalms 119, 133. Direct my steps by your word. 
and let no iniquity have dominion over me. And that's, that's my prayer every morning. I always ask God, Lord, direct my steps, order my steps, you know, by thy word. And let no iniquity, don't, you know, just, Lord, no problems, no sin have dominion over me. You know, order my eyes, you know, my ears, you know, my steps, Lord, in the spirit. See, but this young man, he missed it. See, when he said, good teacher, and he said, no one's good. But what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't say, yeah, I'm good. I'm perfect, you know. But no, you know what he did? He gave all glory to the Father. No one's good but God. All glory goes to the Father. And that's what Jesus was with that. It's not me. It's what the Father do. It's his will, his plan, his purpose. A lot of call to this ministry. But then when we don't walk in the spirit way God has called us to, we start looking at things in the natural and we tend to want to leave. We, we see people, you know, we, we look at me, you know, it's like he ain't this, and I may not be, but in God's eyes, hey, I'm a child of God, and you are too. So I'm going to close tonight. I pray that this word has uh, touched somebody's heart. And Lord, if it's salvation, Lord, I ask that you would bless them right now, Lord, as they Ask, Lord, can they follow you, Lord? In the name of Jesus, allow them to see the plans you have and purpose you have for their lives, Father. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for who you are, my God. Great and awesome, my Lord. And Father, I pray tonight that, Lord, you would allow this word to just go over and over and over in, in, in the person's mind, Lord. As you did give it, as you gave it to me, Lord, as it went over and over and over in my mind and heart, Lord. Father, I give you all the glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Say a word of prayer, Father. I just pray for the unction of your spirit, Father. I just pray that you would minister to your people. I pray, Father God, that you would have your way tonight. Uh, bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. This is one of the Ten Commandments I want to talk about tonight. Um, you know, in this life, you know, we got to make time for a lot of things. We got to make time to go to work, time to go to school. You know, we make time for leisure, time for uh, family, time for our hobbies or, or things that we like to do. Amen. But the, the Sabbath is, is, is a, it's a special time. It's, it's God's time. It's a time that we have to make for God. And it's not something common like all the other things. It's a time that we have to uh, separate our, everything else out and just focus on the pursuit of God, on the pursuit of holiness, on the pursuit of righteousness. And, and during this season that we're in right now, that, that we, we're unable to meet together like we used to and, and worship together like we used to and experience the, the, the dynamic presence of God like we used to. And we're, we're kind of separated on watching online. It's easy to kind of lose the, 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 the focus, you know, the, of, 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 this, of the holiness of, of this time that we separate for God. This little, this pr Old Testament principle of the Sabbath that we have to separate time for God that we're, 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 we're a time of prayer, a time of intimate worship, a time of the, his word where he speaks to us. It's easy to during this season to to kind of fall away and let it become something common, you know, to take away the specialness out of it. So I believe God is saying, you know what? It, it, uh, remember, remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. But there's three things that I wanted to share about tonight that uh, as we. Um, as we as we experience our Sabbath day, our time with the Lord, that we include these things in, in our in our in our in our Sabbath uh, time with with the Lord. And it's um, there are three things. There's reflection, purification and inspiration. 
So for reflection, when we when we're when we're when we separate and when we're, when we're with the Lord that we reflect on our week. You know, the Sabbath was like every once a week that this time that I have with God, I reflect. You know what happened this week? What, what, what did I experience this week? What was God showing me this week? What was God speaking to me this week? What, what was the enemy doing this week? What happened this week? What, what, what's going on? That I, I, I walk with the Lord through my week and I see like, Lord, what, 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 why did this happen? Why did I run into so-and-so? Did, am I, did I have victories? Did I have discouragements? Did you reflect on, on your spirituality, on where you're at? Am I in the center of his perfect will? Am I falling short? Did you reflect that you that you come to the Lord and, and you and you reflect on what happened throughout the week that you could see spiritually what, what's taking place within your life? Reflection, a time of reflection, a time of evaluation where you look at, at the week with God. You reflect on, on the on the things that that happen. You ask why well, was I going through a test? Was that the enemy lying to me? Where you reflect and you ask God to show you, to enlighten you, to speak to you. Reflection, a time of reflection. And then also that we should, during our Sabbath time, we should have a time of purification. You know, when the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray, you know, in, in the prayer he included that, you know, forgive us our sins and lead us not into temptation and there should be a time, you know, like when Moses, when, when he when he seen the, the burning bush where he said, don't come any closer. You know, you got to take off your shoes. This is this is holy ground where we're where we're, we want to like the Psalm 139 says, you know, search me, search me. Oh, God, see if there's any thing within me, any offensive way within me and lead me to the way of everlasting life. Like, like we used to, there used to be a song that we, that we used to sing, you know, search my heart, look deep within my soul and see if there's any offensive way within me. You know, anything that would keep me from hearing you, anything that would keep me from knowing you, anything that would keep me from loving you, search me, oh God, look deep within my soul because you, you want to get close to God and you don't want nothing like like Moses. He had to take off his shoes. He had to take off the, those things that 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 may hinder that may be blocking you uh, or, or maybe uh, blocking the intimacy with God. You know, the, the, the first John one nine, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's just he will forgive your sins. He will cleanse you of all your unrighteousness. Uh, in, Isaiah, in Isaiah, where he says, you know, he says, come now, let us reason together. You know, though your sins be like red or like, like crimson, I will wash you as white as snow. Like God wants to purify you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to bring you closer to him. You know, but if something and, and Jesus says you don't have because you don't ask. But a time of purification, a time of detoxification where you're removing the impurities and you're removing anything and you're pursuing the Lord. A time of purification. And then also the last thing was, uh, was a, a time of inspiration. You know, when you have when, during the Sabbath time. You should in include a time of inspiration where you're asking the spirit of God to inspire you, to give you vision, to give you. We're a people of purpose. The, in Ephesians, it says that, that there's works that he created for us to do. And in uh, Jeremiah uh, 33, 3, call upon the Lord and he will show you. He will show you great, unsearchable things that you do not know. God speaks. God moves. God will, is a God of revelation. He'll bring, uh, he'll enlighten you. He'll bring insight to you. So, so uh, seek inspiration from God. Ask him to fill you, man, fill you with joy, fill you with passion, fill you with vision, fill you with hope, fill you with strength. To, to, to fill you with, with, with the power of his spirit, to, to, to do the things that he's calling you to do, to fulfill the purpose. You know, we're people of purpose, a people of destiny. So seek inspiration, reflect, uh, you know, and, and reflect on, on, the, on the things of the week. Seek purification and seek inspiration. Make that time for God. Don't let, don't let it become common. 
It's not just another time like all the other times. It's a special time. It's a time that is separated for the purposes of pursuing God, for the purposes of pursuing holiness. So don't let it become common during, especially right now. You know, we live in a, in a, in a, in a wicked, wicked world. And God, the blood of Jesus washes us white as snow, purifies us. And it's like we're wearing a a white suit, you know. Or imagine if you put on some brand new white socks and you start walking down the street. You don't got to go very far to get dirty. And that's how that's how God, the power of God washes us so pure and so clean. But as we go about our week, it's easy to get stained. It's easy to get to get uh, dirty, you know. But God wants to wash us and cleanse us, you know. But this this. This season that we're in right now, don't let your Sabbath time become common. Don't let it become a routine, you know. Pursue God more intimately, more passionately. Make him number one, amen. And as I close, I just want to share about the, I was thinking about about, uh, cell phones. You know how just everybody has a phone. So you know how when your battery is getting low, you got to plug it in. When you do that, let that be a reminder to you about your spiritual battery. You know, when you see that your battery's getting low, you go plug your phone in. You know, the, the screen starts to fade. It gets weaker. You can't really. But when it's fully charged, you know, you can watch videos or do whatever. But let it be a reminder to you when you plug it in to look at your spiritual battery. Look at your spiritual battery. Amen. And, but with that, that's what I just feel like the Lord was saying. You know, don't let the, this, that period of time that it's his, don't let it become common. It's a special time. Amen. Well, God bless you guys and we'll be together soon. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. Thank you, Brother Caesar, for the powerful word uh, that you brought before the church this evening. We're grateful for the two of you. And uh, and now it's up to us to respond to God's word. And the best way to begin to respond is simply by an altar call right now that we can go to God and just take a moment and say, God, I hear what you're saying to me. That moment, just a moment to acknowledge that I know it's you. It's 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 not different from the moment that Moses went to the burning bush. To go and say, I hear your voice. I'm here and I hear your voice. To acknowledge that God is speaking, that, that, that you had this burning bush experience and God is calling you to holiness. God is calling you to commitment and that we can respond to God simply by making an altar call. Even though we're not in church, you can make an altar call right where you are. Simply bow your hearts. Bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment and say, yes, Lord, I hear you. Yes, Lord, I know what you've called me to do. Yes, Lord, I am willing to give my life to you, to serve you. I am willing, Father God, to lay it all down and to make you the Lord of my life, to allow you to guide me, to allow you, my God, to purify me, to allow you, my God, to raise me up and to use my life for your kingdom, my God. I pray, Father God, for those that are responding to you right now, that you would speak to them. I pray your anointing upon them. I pray that you would open doors for them, Father God, that you would have your way. We thank you tonight for these messages. We thank you tonight for all that you're doing. And we ask that your blessing be with us in Jesus name and God's people say, amen. Amen. God bless you. And we look to see you this Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Amen. Be safe. Thank you.